Hello and welcome to TI Precision Labs. In this series, we're going to discuss PCI Express Protocol Interface as it relates to retimers, such as the Texas Instruments DS160 PT801 PCIe Gen 4 retimer. PCIe retimers are signal conditioning devices that actively participate in the PCIe protocol to facilitate communication between a root complex and an endpoint. By providing improved signal integrity to a system, they increase the maximum allowable PCIe trace and allow more flexibility in a system design. In this TIPL video, we'll discuss the details of how retimers work and their role in PCIe communication. The primary responsibility of a PCIe retimer is to compensate for signal loss and distortion due to the transmission media. It accomplishes this in a few ways. One way is by working in the analog domain to electrically compensate for signal loss. For signal loss. A retimer can utilize an adaptive equalizer and a decision feedback equalizer, or a DFE, to compensate for the signal loss, noise, and crosstalk. It can also provide pre- or post-emphasis at the transmitter to improve signal conditioning. The second function for a retimer is clock and data recovery, or CDR, which recovers incoming signal clocks and applies a low-pass filter to reduce high-frequency noise and jitter. It then uses this clean recovered clock to sample incoming data. The last task for a retimer is to actively participate in PCIe protocol communication. Retimers are protocol aware and they communicate between the root complex and the endpoint to optimize signal integrity on both its inputs and outputs. The link training and status state machine, or LTSSM, dictates how the retimer interfaces with the CPU or endpoint through the PCIe protocol. Each of these tasks are important to the overall function of the retimer. Let's take a closer look at how the retimer accomplishes the initial analog signal conditioning at its receiver. In the graph on the left, the line in green shows the loss over frequency for a 14-inch stripline trace. As the graph shows, high-speed signals that pass through transmission media get heavily attenuated due to the low-pass filtering effects of a channel. A retimer receiver has a CTLE that can help compensate for this channel loss. The gain provided by the CTLE boosts the overall signal by about 7 dB, as shown in the red line. In real time, a retimer will sweep through various CTLE settings in order to adapt to the channel until it sees an eye opening that can achieve its required bit error rate. The images on the right show an oscilloscope image of an actual PCIe Gen 4 signal. The top image shows a PCIe signal using preset 7 being generated by a source. After 20 dB of loss due to the transmission media bandwidth limitations, like we saw with our 14-inch stripline media. Finally, the retimer provides gain from its CTLE, which helps compensate for some of the high-frequency loss in the channel, which opens up the eye diagram. This helps the retimer receiver recover a PCIe signal that has been degraded due to loss in the system. The second task a retimer performs is data recovery. Data recovery is the process of sampling an input data stream at ideal locations within each data bit, and then retransmitting that data with a very low jitter clock at the same average frequency. In its simplest and most common form, data recovery is just a flip-flop that's been gated with a clean recovered clock, as we can see using the diagram at the bottom. Data recovery is necessary to eliminate jitter and amplitude degradation in the incoming data stream and then retransmit it. In theory, this process can allow for retransmission of data almost, indefin data almost indefinitely. In the PCIe topology, the root complex implements a software stack. The PCIe software stack follows ISO software layers. There is the transaction layer, the data link layer, and the physical, logical, and physical electrical layers. PCIe communication, similarly to Ethernet, is encapsulated in packets. Packetization, depacketing, and traffic monitoring is done by the transaction layer. The data link layer works to assure integrity of the transaction layer packets. Additionally, it directs physical, logical layer devices, such as a retimer, to build and monitor the status of a session. These are done through data link layer packets. A PCIe retimer implements a logical and physical layer interface to support the higher layers. It acts as a go-between between the data link layer and the physical layer. 
which isolates the link layer of physical interactions through the LTSSM, which is managed by the data link layer. PCIe is a point-to-point -point topology, with separate links from the root complex to each element within the topology. A PCIe link can vary from 1 to 32 lanes. Non-PCIe devices are isolated through PCIe bridges. This is done to isolate legacy interfaces such as PCI or other non-PCIe compliant devices. Additionally, PCIe devices connected to the root complex negotiate specific data rates based on the capability of each entity. A PCIe retimer, similar to a PCIe switch, needs to behave like an endpoint to the root complex and at the same time act as a root complex interfacing to the endpoint. The latest PCIe products today support PCIe Gen 5, which is 32 gigabits per second. These data rates need to be negotiated through polling and configuration to decide a specific data rate based on the media, band on the media bandwidth and insertion loss. The receiver and transmitter signal conditioning parameters also need to be negotiated to ensure a PCIe link has an acceptable bit error rate. To enable compatibility among different equipment, compliance patterns are used to check adherence to the physical electrical interface parameters, such as pre-emphasis or de-emphasis. These are mainly used to increase signal reach across different transmission media. Link recovery allows the link partners to recover from different interruptions in the data flow. These interruptions could be due to low bit error rate and diagnostic functions such as the loopback or a speed change. L0 is the normal operation or forwarding mode. In this mode, the retimer is purely an analog signal conditioning device and forwards data coming through with minimum delay. A retimer stays in this mode until instructed by LTSSM commands. Earlier, we discussed signal conditioning presets negotiated during LTSSM states. There are 11 presets, and each PCIe device must conform to each of the settings. Compliance testing checks adhere to these settings. Source TX presets, Sync RXEQ, and Sync DFE all together are used to improve the overall signal integrity for optimal BER, or bit error rate. A retimer through protocol negotiation provides appropriate presets such that the Sync RX can tune its CTLE and DFE to achieve optimum bit error rate. A redriver, on the other hand, needs to maintain AC and DC linearity to pass along or seamlessly transfer presets being received. A redriver also needs to boost high frequency content lost due to the transmission line. However, this should not be at the expense of suppressing or attenuating the presets. The LTSSM starts with receiver detection. In this state, the root complex transmitter impedance is high. After detecting RX termination on its transmitter, it enables transmitter it enables its own TX termination. If the root complex doesn't detect a receiver, then it continues in a polling in an infinite loop before moving on. The retimer also checks for termination on its output before it turns on its transmitter facing the root complex. Once the root complex turns on its TX termination, it sends out a training sequence, called a TS1, at Gen 1 data rates. If there's no response within 24 milliseconds, the root complex sends out a compliance pattern. The Gen 1 training sequences exchange capabilities between the root complex and the endpoint. The league partners advertise capabilities such as data rate supported or their compliance state. If a higher data rate is confirmed by both ends from configuration, a recovery state is initiated. Since going to the next data rate is a speed change, the link will go idle and once there is a signal, the league partners would exchange training sequences at the new Gen 3 data rate. While equalization is started and finalized, Afterwards, again, a higher data rate may be advertised by a link partner. If both ends confirm higher data rate support, the same process occurs and the link will go again into the recovery state. From the recovery state, configuration is started again until the final data rate is achieved. Then, instead of recovery, the link will move into L0. For the retimer, this is called forwarding mode. In forwarding mode, a retimer is purely an analog device and it's retiming the data at the highest data rate negotiated. At the same time, a retimer is continuously checking for training sequences at L0, looking for commands such as loopback. If one end of the link has an interruption, possibly caused by bit errors, a recovery state is initiated and link partners go into electrical idle before the speed change occurs. Once the speed change occurs, 
Rx and Tx link equalizations are performed and into forwarding mode. Thanks for joining us, and if you have any questions about PCI retimers, please visit our engineer support forums at e2e.ti.com and look for us in the interface section. If you're interested in learning more about the PCIe protocol, please check out this presentation in our TIPL series.